Hey there, nerds. Welcome back to another episode of Two Nerdy Dads. With me, as always, is Jason Applegate. Say hey, Jason. Hey, everybody. How's it going? So we are on episode blah, blah, blah. I think we're up to 25, maybe 26, <laughs> somewhere around there. We're at that we're point old. where you forget when your birthday is and it doesn't matter to you anymore. Like, that's how many episodes we've done. <laughs> we're just all we, I think this is two in one month, though, so that's pretty impressive. It is for, for us lately. That's true. <laughs> 2015 is a little... Anywho, so... Well, I think the first thing that I think we should talk about is um, the news that kind of came, it was, I guess, more of a controversy um, that came out. I didn't see the interview, but apparently um, Jeremy Renner and the actor who plays Captain America, whose name is escaping me at this exact moment, why can't I think of his name? Do you remember? The, the who? The the actor who plays Captain America. Oh, Chris Evans? Thank you, Chris Evans. Um, had in an interview just jokingly called Black Widow a slut. Um, and so there was a lot of, you know, outcry about that. Um, and uh, and I thought it was interesting and, and wondered what, what your take on it was. Um, and where, you, you know, I don't know, did you see the interview? Because I didn't. I just saw the reaction to it. I purposely stayed away from it because my opinion of the media right now is pretty low. Um, I feel like there's a lot of uh, fishing and trolling. Mm. And this may have been real, may have been fake. I didn't really care because I feel like they all get along pretty well. And proof, proof to that is that the next day a video came out where it was um, Scarlett Johansson and Mark Ruffalo being interviewed. And the interviewer, I can't remember, I think she was British, but I can't remember what uh, magazine she was with, sort of switched the roles up a bit and was asking questions to Mark that would typically be asked of Scarlett. Things like, Hmm. so what are you wearing? Um, What did it take to uh, look as good as you do? What have you been working out, doing stuff like that? Whereas Scarlett was being asked the questions that Mark would typically be asked, such as, you know, how how do you prepare for a role like this? Um, What do you feel is um you know the main character development of black widow so it was really interesting dichotomy and a change up mm-hmm. i enjoyed that but i really didn't want to get into the, the trolling of hey look what happened so you can click on our video i'm like i'm tired of that i don't want to see it yeah no i hear you on that i you have to send me a link to that interview if you come across it again because i would be interested to, to see that one where they they switch the the questions cuz that's really cool that they did that and i think you're speaking to something um that i think is nice to hear about the avengers is that the cast members all seem to be getting along really well they seem to be enjoying themselves which is nice because i always think back to spider-man 3 when that came out with told me about Toby Maguire and, and and the rest of them, and they were miserable. They hated filming Spider Man three, and, and I remember them catching flack from uh, the from the company from Sony for not promoting the film enough. Like they would go on these interviews, and people would ask them questions, and they would just give the shortest answers possible about the movie, and want to move on to talking about something else. And then you That's saw so what. Cool. All, how awful that turned out and thankfully it was the end of that that particular run uh, as it should have been but it's nice to see this because we're hoping to see a lot more of these actors working together as avengers um and uh, i think that's that's pretty cool but i think that the second thing and, and i hear what you're saying about the trolling and stuff like that that people are looking for things to uh, get you to click on their their sites and stuff like that. But if this is true, and 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 the two actors came back out and apologized um, for for referring to her in that way, um, I, I find it really kind of interesting because on the one hand, um, you know they're goofing around, maybe joking around about it. Uh, like I said, I didn't see the interview myself, and they 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 call her that because she's the. I'm guessing it's in the context of the idea that she's the one female amongst all of these males, um, and and so they're just joking about. Well, that's just because she's you know promiscuous. We'll use that word instead. Um, but I thought it was interesting that that it got the backlash that it did, and I don't 
blame people for being upset about that a little bit um, only because of, uh, you know, the, how media tends to just objectify, you know, women in films. And that Black Widow, I think one of the strengths in Captain America, too, was that her character took a more, you know, more of a prominent role than she had taken in any of the movies that she was in before. Back to Iron Man 2 in Avengers, where really she is just there to look at and to see her kick some butt and do some crazy stuff and, um, you know, be this sort of dangerous female, but in a still sort of like, isn't she sexy kind of way. So um, I thought it was, it raised some interesting issues at the, at the very least. I can see that. I, again, I just didn't want to watch it because uh, I feel like this group has been together for a while. I think they defend each other. I think they, um, and I mean defend each other in the media and all that. Yeah. And to be honest, it was only a week earlier that the the gentleman who was interviewing um, Robert Downey Jr. decided to take the route of oh, asking yeah. questions about his dad and his past. And it's like, no, why don't we ask questions about Avengers 2? It's like, okay, clearly this has reached a point where Avengers 2 doesn't need promotion, so we're going to pick on other things. And I just don't, I don't care anymore. Yeah, that was that was low and unprofessional of that guy to do that because that was just the sabotage job. And I guess I had read he had done something like that similarly to Quentin Tarantino, who, like, good for him in a way. I think I don't really particularly care for that guy, but um, – but he he'll sort of ask these questions that aren't that's not the purpose of what the interview is for. Um, I thought what was great about that incident, and I'm glad you brought it up, was how Robert Downey Jr. handled it. That yeah. um, he did get up and end the interview after looking at his publicist, um, who who agreed that hey we're done here. Um, but then he he made a little joke about yeah I was getting a little Barbara Walters in here. Um, and, uh, and it made the, the guy who realized he screwed this thing up and really messed up an opportunity, um, made him chuckle. Um, and then he shook his hand and, and left. Now, Wizard World isn't exactly the biggest convention. Um, they do have quite a setup and that they're in almost every city now. And they, they really have a routine on how you go about getting into the convention, they have all their booths set up, and then they have basically a cattle call for all the celebrities and stuff, and you pay to get autograph and pictures and stuff. But I felt that this would be the safest one to take James for his first one, uh, like I said, this past weekend. And um, I'm really curious to sort of compare notes with the first time you took Kate to a convention, because I know you've been to a couple there in Detroit area. Yeah, yeah. It's um, It was so cool to see the pictures. And I was like, that's so awesome um, because it is such a unique experience. And it's such a fun bonding moment, you know, to share that with your with your kids, um, particularly with your son, you know, and, and especially if he's into the same things that that you're into. Um, and yeah, I gosh, Cade has been to, I think, three with me so far. And um each interaction, each time we've gone has been um, a unique experience. Um, I think the first time it was just sort of like, wow. Um, I want to say, the was it the first time or the second time? It was the one where Stan Lee was there, and it was a wow. zoo. It was Stan Lee and William Shatner were there that year. Oh, geez. I think, yeah. And so it was absurdly crowded like like the so much so that the the people that had put on the con were completely underprepared for it there were all kinds of issues that that were happening um and so it was it was a mess and if that wasn't the first time it was the second um i think it was the second um and it was um it was a zoo and it was crazy and mostly what i was trying to do was just make sure that he we didn't get separated um, to make sure that, um, we had to wait like an hour in line to get food there. You know, it was just sort of like, it was like a Disney world kind of all the bad parts of Disney <laughs> world, the <laughs> idea, you know, all the waiting in lines and, and dealing with crowds and having to pay a whole bunch of money for food. You don't even really want to eat and all that stuff. Um, but overall he was still wowed by it. Um, he loves to actually go amongst where all the collectibles and stuff are more so than 
um, where all the actors and everything, all the media people are, uh, and the comic book, you know, writers and artists and stuff are, um, especially early on. I feel like this last time when we just went, he appreciated that a little bit more because he, I think, knew some of the people that, that were there as, as movie stars and television stars a little bit more. Um, and he understood that, hey, this is the guy who drew the comic that I read or that my dad reads or um, this guy, um, you know, created the Dark Phoenix, which is like his, you know, very favorite uh, X-Men character, you know? So that part, I think he finally, that dawned on him and he was able to, to appreciate that. Um, but I think the most fun that he has is, um, and it's because my kids are into theater too, so this shouldn't come as a surprise, is dressing up. He loves to dress up and go to Comic-Con. In fact, if we go multiple days, he'll wear different costumes each day we go. And he loves that people come up and say, oh, that looks so cool, and you know that's awesome. I, I know one year he went as Magneto. We usually will recycle his Halloween costumes, which is another great sort of little thing to do. I think this year he's going to go as Doctor Strange because that's who he, he was for Halloween. So um, I'm sure he'll get lots of... Um, you know, thumbs up and high fives for that, which is, which is pretty cool and pretty fun. So it was cool to see you doing that with your son. Cause I, I know how proud of a moment that is and how much fun it is to just bond and share that, that time together. It was, it was, it was very cool. And it was funny as soon as we got through the door and you know, they, they know what they're doing. They have vendors right there at the front and the first thing, Oh, can I get that? And I'm like, all right, here's how we play this game. <laughs> So I'm walking through basically, you know, the unofficial rules of a Comic Con, and uh, I kind of wrote <laughs> nice. down an article on Nerd Locker. It's like, no, we we survey the area, we take into what's going on, where is what, that sort of thing. And with him, it was like, here's a meeting place. If some reason we get separated, you go here so we can find each other. Right. Um, and the very last thing we do, the absolute very last thing, then we go shopping and look at the vendors. So we know, like, uh, he wanted a uh, Harry Potter wand. Cool. Hmm. First convention, let's get him a Harry Potter one. First booth we went to, oh, that's thirty dollars. Okay, mm -hmm. cool. Walk away. Next booth, fifteen dollars. I'm like, yeah, I think we'll go with the next booth. So yeah, nobody do that. It teaches them good so, lessons in in you know the shopping for the for the right price stuff. I know for us, um, for Kate, it's it, our rule as far as purchasing things is it has to already be opened. <laughs> Is one of the rules because he's going to open it and play with it anyway. And so I, and, and he picked it up pretty quick. I'm like, if it's in its box still, it's, they are asking way more than what you want to pay for this. So if you're going to find something, we go to the booths where the, they have all the stuff that's already out of the box and open and, and it's right in, in a nice little price range. And, and usually I'll get him one thing you know, as sort of like the souvenir for the whole experience. But if he wants something else, you know, he, he can afford it and it's it's his own money, you know, and, and, and it's nice to, to learn that too. But the cool thing about Comic-Con is that you can find stuff there that, that you don't find anywhere else. And he, he really appreciates that. In fact, he's already talking about it and is looking forward to it. That's cool. And that's our rule is that, uh, you know, James was pointing out things that you can get in a store. And I'm like, you are not buying anything here that we can go to Target or Walmart you have to get something that is either hard to find or you just won't have it online or anywhere else. So you right. know, look for those. Things. Right. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. So did you see any, anything cool at C2? You went to, wait, you went to wizard world, right? Cause yes, wizard world was the same Las weekend. The first time. I know it's, that was the, that was the funny part because I was seeing posts and I wasn't sure which, which one, one it was. was. I'm not That's saying awesome. wizard world was on that level. It's right. just, there was a couple from Las Vegas and they posted things and I thought they were in uh, Chicago, but no, they were actually here. And then uh, vice versa. They said a couple of people put, Oh, this was just released. And I'm like here. No, Chicago. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, yeah, it was kind of funny. That's cool. Very cool. All right. Well, the only other thing that I know that we talked about, or I just sent you right before was these, <laughs> and it's kind of getting to our nostalgic, which we didn't really get to last week, was someone had released a um, eight creepiest cartoons. And, and the idea was that um, here all the, the, the cartoons from our childhood are being made into live action movies. You've got Transformers, you've got Ninja Turtles, you've got G.I. Joe. Um, and, and I guess I, um, 
that they're doing are they doing another live action he-man yes they i believe they are i'd heard about this oh man i don't uh, you know what i can't put specifics on it but I, i'm pretty sure they are yeah i it sounds vaguely familiar because i think i remember us talking about it before and and mentioning you know well is dolph lundgren gonna make an, an appearance in it from when he was in the live action version from uh you know the late 80s but um that was my, I don't know what your cartoon was uh, and your your toys were. I know you were big into Star Wars, but um, He-Man was the one that we watched after school every day. Like, it was get your homework done so that you can watch He-Man at 4 o'clock. And um, that was the one that I I still have the, the action figures from and, and the rest. And I was sort of surprised to see it on this list of eight creepiest cartoons, especially compared to some of the other ones that we'll, we'll just touch on here a little bit. Were you surprised? I, or no? I was at first, but then when they described it, it was as, kind of funny. Uh, they're surprised it won't be rated R because it's a guy running around with, uh, you know, a furry underwear and almost yeah. equated to like a porn or something. I don't know. Yeah, but they yeah, say. It, after they described it, I was like, oh, yeah, I guess I could see that. <laughs> right. An R rated sex comedy. A man wearing yeah, nothing but a fur that. Speedo who calls himself He Man hangs out with characters named oh, Ram Man and Fisto. Ram bring the kids and i'm like oh, all right you just had to go there didn't you but it exactly. is like we it was probably a couple years ago that the he-man cartoons were on netflix and so just out of nostalgia and such i was watching them with the kids and i'm like my gosh this show is terrible it's just so bad so like not just cheesy but bad animation bad story like everything was just awful but i still love it because it's part of our childhood you know oh heck yeah and it's funny because I, I same thing watched it recently and james loves it i think it was on netflix and and like optimus prime who they used in the movie was like the perfect voice for optimus prime i can't imagine any other voice being that way it seemed like um voltron the voices were great. I loved him. Watching He-Man again, I was like, you know what, Adam? He-Man, it doesn't seem like that's a really cool, manly voice. It's no. weird. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Yeah, well, and just the idea, like, watching it as an adult now, and there's Adam, and he's kind of, like, you know, very delicate, and he wears his pink shirt and his ridiculous haircut and everything, and you're just like, oh, my gosh, this is, like, so bad. Um, just politically incorrect in a lot of ways. And it just was like, okay, well, that's the eighties for you. So, I mean, but creepy, not compared to number one on this list, which you remember. And I don't, at least you remember part of it. Turbo teen, this guy who turns only, into a car. The only part I remember is, and I, I would have never, like I told you, I would have never in a million years gone. Oh yeah. Tur Turbo teen, this movie w or this cartoon was awful. It's like, no, no, no. I read it and I saw the little picture. I'm like, oh my God, that was the one where the dude, the kid, teenager, would literally turn into a car and his hand would come forward and become the wheel. And obviously they use the same transformation every single time. Sure. And I'm like, oh my God, that was so bad. I remember that. And it was, it was I think if I read it correctly, it was, it was something where he got hot or he got warm yeah. and he did it. Not like Hulk <laughs> where he got angry and he could control it. It's like, oh my God. I live in Vegas. It's warm outside. <laughs> <laughs> well, in Michigan, he'd be all right for a long time. Like six months out of the year here, he would be okay. Um, but the other six months out of the year, he wouldn't be able to get anywhere because of all the construction and, and everything. So that's where the, you know, he know, couldn't the be based out of duck over be heard. That's right. Wow. That's right. Exactly. So, um, <laughs> I just uh, I didn't even know that one existed. I had never seen it before. And same with some of these other ones. Tell me what if any of these other ones stood out to you. Kissy Fur, nineteen eighty six. Not even close. Don't know. Yeah, it looks like a a bunch of bears that are in like the deep south. So you know that that just sounds like a recipe for success to me. I don't know. Um. And then I don't even know the title of this one. A dark, deserted department store wherein a mannequin comes to life. <laughs> and I didn't see the title for that one. It's not showing up on, on, on what I'm looking at right now. Then another one where a teddy bear is brought to life. 
Super 10. I think that one was called Today's Special, that one you just Today's described. Today's Special, yeah. I see the titles oh, now. They're underneath it. Okay. Yeah. Today's Special. Yeah, like, what is that even? Uh, I think that's like the worst title for a show anyway. <laughs> it's like, is that an after-school special? What is that? <laughs> Who knows? The, how did these things get put on television is what I want to know. Like, to be a television, uh, car, you know, an animation writer in the 1980s, the market must have been wide open because I do well, not get these. That's what's crazy, too. I mean, today, you literally have a million channels and the internet. Yeah. Back then, you had three channels, and then you'd have some local programming channels. Mm -hmm. You couldn't fill content? Are you kidding me? <laughs> even rerunning scooby-doo from the 60s yes it's like what did they give up on on original stuff in the 80s this is ridiculous the only one that you and i both remembered was um yeah, other than the than the he-man that we talked about was life with louis um which yeah. was louis anderson was a like he had his five minutes of fame and um where where he was the big comedian literally and figuratively but um and then he had this cartoon and I thought it was kind of funny. I mean, because it, it, it was certainly unique um, with regards to him and his, his sort of dysfunctional family. I remember his mom being somewhat humorous, but what was creepy about it was Louis Anderson as an adult voiced the, the kid. And it just, I thought it sounded funny, but apparently it creeped this author out. I think it was last week. Sony announced that they have bought, I want to say it was five, a five picture deal from Valiant Comics. Hmm. Now, I know we've seen some image comics come up, specifically Spawn. Uh, I know we have The Walking Dead on TV, but I can't think of another yeah. image movie. But this is really the first time I can think of. Pro we probably have a Dark Horse property in there, Hellboy. Um, yeah. But this is really the first time a not major independent is going to get some uh, get some publicity here, get some... Uh, it's a, ch a chance to put their, their movies on the big screen. And I, I wanted to hear what you thought about that. Well, I don't know Valiant as well as you do. So um, I think it's great. I think the more, um, you know, comic titles that we can get out there in different, you know, media is great, whether it's television or film. Um, I just hope Sony doesn't screw it up like they've done other things. Um, but uh, do you know which title they're, they're looking at at spearheading first? The two I know off the top of my head are Exo Man of War, which is fine. I'm just not his biggest fan. Okay. Um, it's the story of the um, – I don't even remember what his, what his sort of background is as far as uh, uh, nationality, so to speak. But he's um, an ancient, like, Viking, essentially. And aliens come down, pluck him out. And I can't remember if they take his people or just him. He must take his people because that's part of the story where he's trying to protect them. But take – him and his people, and somehow he gets this suit, and they're transformed into the future, and that's where he is in present day, trying to protect his people and his land and all that. Like their country is gone, obviously, because you know it didn't exist anymore. Mm -hmm. um, so he is tasked with protecting his people, but then he's basically got this um, uh, indestructible suit that he wears that he also then translates to defending. Um, citizens of the planet Earth at one point. Mm -hmm. So it's not Exo Man of War is not my favorite, but he's he's a pretty good character. The one that I, I really do enjoy is Bloodshot who was also, I think he's even gotten a director already, but um, he's sort of like um, uh, Wolverine, except he doesn't have claws or anything like that. I'm talking about Wolverine as far as the healing factor and they equate it to having nanites in his body mm -hmm. that were injected so that he can basically never be killed. And he's mm -hmm. an assassin that works for an agency. I can't remember the agency. Project Rising something. Um, and he's basically just a uh, uh, thoughtless soldier. He does whatever they tell him because he's programmed that way. Mm -hmm. And he eventually wants to break that mold, and he does break it. So he becomes his own being. Why am I killing you and all this stuff? So I really enjoy Bloodshot. The other characters I'd love to see are Ninjak, who I, I just love Ninjak. He's a British MI agent, and he's just a ninja, and you really don't know much about him. Um, I think he's fantastic. Um, and then, of course, Quantum and Woody and Archer and Armstrong, two separate books. I absolutely love Quantum and Woody. That's how I know about Valiant, because back in the 90s when you and I were collecting, I got uh, stuck on Quantum and Woody. 
and they were hilarious. Christopher Priest wrote some of the most funny comic books that were action based, and it was hilarious. I loved it. Um, but then recently, I got back on a Valiant with Archer and Armstrong because Quantum and Woody didn't kick off with the uh, the restart. And it's just such a great development or uh, uh, telling of history. And I'm a huge mm -hmm. history buff. I'm a history major. And seeing how um, uh, Fred Van Lent, who writes it or wrote it, um, just used history to tell the story of Archer, who is a sort of brainwashed, um, I, not, it's a new new religion based on Christianity. Mm -hmm. It's not like born again Christian or anything like that. Yeah. It's a definitely warped version of Christianity. And Archer, who is an immortal, because of um, I can't remember what they found, but an ancient artifact that they found that blew up. Him and his brothers became immortal, and he's walked through history forever as the one who shall not be named. And the <laughs> Christian cult. Um, basically wants to kill him because he's constantly looking and trying to piece this thing back together that the Christian cult wants to put together to end the world uh, or basically control the world. So it's, it's just a fascinating story that uses history. And I didn't mean to drone on like that, but I love Archer Armstrong. But I'm just, I'm just really impressed with Sony. I hope they learned their lesson with Spider-Man. They're like, you know what? We'll have um, the cr creators of this be more involved in the movie making mm -hmm. process. Um, but I'm just really impressed that they went out of their way, reached out or whatever, found Valiant, because it's not like Valiant's huge, but they found Valiant and said, hey, you guys got great stories. We want to take these characters and put them on the big screen. Yeah, I think that I think the two that have the most promise are the, the last two ish, the two titles that you mentioned because of the comedic element that can be factored in there. And I think that that is hugely important uh, and and you can look at Guardians, you know, for that, and even really back at Iron Man. I mean, think about before, before Robert Downey Jr. Iron Man was not the. I mean, everyone knows Iron Man now. Little kids know Iron Man. Ten years ago, or fifteen years ago, or whatever, before Iron Man came out, like you know, some of them would know that, but he's not. He wasn't on the same level of recognition as as like Spider Man is. And part well, of you it and I was, talked about that in the '90s when we collected. There's the whole Heroes Reborn thing, and yeah. Image was doing some of the characters because nobody knew them or cared. Their sales were awful, right? And, and nowadays, so, because of the movie, they're huge. Yeah, yeah, and and it was. I feel that both of those films were successful because of the comedic element placed into it. Um, it wasn't. I mean, you know, Batman so dark and serious, and even Spider Man was dramatic and serious, and there were there are elements of of comedy in there. But if you're doing something that is, um, you know, not very well known, you can appeal to people by not taking yourself too seriously in the making of your movie. Too Men in Black's another example of that, uh, of a movie that like people don't didn't know that that was a that that was a comic. And even and what it was or anything like that before it came out, but it was it looked like a lot of fun. That's what you have to do, and I feel like those two could do that if they start with EXO and um, they or or Bloodshot. I, I'm worried that maybe they don't take off, um, but it might it might depend on who they you know. It always depends on writing, if you ask me, but also on casting. And if they have an, um, a vehicle uh, and an actor who can like hold that part down and people might just go see it because, Hey, it's this guy. Um, and we like watching him in, in movies. So that might be a possibility too. I don't know, but I'm excited. Like you are, I think the more comic book movies that, that we have the better, the, the, the merrier. So, um, that's pretty cool news. Very cool news. Yeah. I, and again, I was, I was surprised and impressed. So, because they're they're sort of known as the non superhero comic company, and I think Image and Dark Horse could both claim that too. That they really do stay away from superheroes. Yeah, not in the tradition, not in the Marvel and DC kind of way. I mean, they don't they don't have the the capes and and the and the tights, which is why I, I'm like I said, I have read limited variant uh, uh, of or uh, Valiant, sorry, comics. And isn't that part of the thing with Quantum and Woody is that they do wear like the tights and the cape and stuff like that, but it's like in, you know, it's very tongue in cheek. Um, oh, it's, with it's to my it. favorite because of that. They yeah. accidentally get powers in a wristband that they have to clasp every 24 hours together or else they'll blow up. 
and Quantum is all about it. He wants to be the superhero. He wants to use his powers. And Woody's just like, whatever, dude, I'm Woody. So Quantum yeah. is his code name, his secret identity, and Woody is literally Woody. <laughs> That's awesome. That's really awesome. Um, the uh, the other little bit of news that just came out, and I don't know who the actor is, so maybe you know it. You're always better with these names than I am anyway, is apparently there's a front runner for the new Spider-Man movie too. Um, there is. It was the gentleman. I don't remember his name, but it was the kid in, um, of course, it was Ender's Game. Ender's Game, yeah. Yeah, As Asa, I think, or something like that. I'm trying to look it up. But um, it, it was the only – I hadn't seen Ender's Game at all. Uh, so I don't know if I'm excited about this, not excited about this. What's your thoughts? He's a Butterfield. Um, go read the book and skip the movie, in my opinion. Um, <laughs> it was a shocker. He, yeah, I know. But it's one of those <laughs> weird ones where the book, it's not very long, but it tackles a lot of things, and – it really spans a long period of time. And I only recently, I read the book last summer before I saw the movie. Maybe it was the summer before. I can't remember. Um, but there are people that have read this movie or read this book as children. And now 10, 15 years later, they're going to see the movie and all this stuff. And they were so disappointed and devastated. And I just looked at it as, you know, being an adult, seeing both. I mean, like, yeah, the movie's okay. It just, yeah, it wasn't as good. They didn't, they really skipped a lot of the integral things that were in the book, and I don't know why or how they did that. They just basically stuck to the sci-fi action stuff, which I, I guess I understand from a marketing point of view. But um, no, the kid uh, was – he was good. He was good. I don't know if he can be Spider-Man, but to be honest, it's not like I saw Andrew Garfield and was like, yeah, that's Spider-Man, or even um, – uh, what's his name? Toby McGuire. Guy, Toby McGuire. I really didn't think he could do it, so I'm I'm done guessing who can do what when it comes to putting on tights because I'm I miss I I don't get it right ever. Well, I'm glad he he looks young, so I, I'm glad they're you know going to still stick with the high school Peter Parker, um, at least for the for the first film like they did with with Garfield. So um, that's encouraging. Um, I know there were a lot of rumors about it being the ultimate Spider-Man, Miles uh, Morales, you know, so, uh, but then those got squashed pretty quickly. Um, so, and it, I would have been cool with that, but I kind of understand why you wouldn't, especially if you are rebooting it um, again and, and doing it with the, with the Marvel title, you know, people are going to want to see the, the Peter Parker, you know, version of it. Um any other news that you that you know of? I know we've got the big premiere in a couple of a couple of days here of uh, you know highly anticipated Marvel movie. But anything else that you are excited about? Or well, has been um, news? we we do have a review up of uh, Avengers two already from our British compatriots. So awesome. if you want to go, want to see what people thought, especially from a British slant, go for it. It's up there. But yeah, that's coming out uh, Friday in a couple days, or maybe by the time my lazy butt gets this up, it'll already be out. Um, <laughs> but I'm really excited. I don't usually go to the preview screenings here in Vegas, but uh, I'm going to go see uh, Mad Max. Uh, oh. I believe it's not next Wednesday, but the Wednesday after. So I'm really excited to be Mad Max. It's one of those movies where um, growing up, I snuck to see it, not into the theater, but over to a friend's house or something. Yeah. So it's one of those movies I totally shouldn't have seen. Um, I think everybody can agree no kid should see that. And I saw it. It was amazing. <laughs> I loved it. And then I actually worked backwards from um, um, the third one to the second one. I think yeah. I went third one, two. So it was way okay. out of order. Not that it really matters, but I think I went way out of order. And um, so, yeah, it stuck with me for a long time. So going to see this is almost, and not quite, but it's almost like, a little inkling of going to see Star Wars again because this hasn't been released in so long. Mm -hmm. Going to the theater to see a Mad Max, and it just looks so ridiculous that they're just embracing that ridiculousness, yeah. and that's what's going to make it amazing. It looks, like real, it, looks, it looks real stylized, which I I like. I think it's if nothing else, if it's not very good, it'll have style. <laughs> I feel so that that's well, cool. I'm a huge fan of George Miller. He did obviously the first two Mad Max. He kind of did the third one. I think we've talked about this before. His producing mm -hmm. partner died in a helicopter crash doing scouting for the third one. So he was like, I, I, I'm not going to do this. I can't do it. Um, I'm not going to be a part of Thunderdome. 
And they brought in another director to do it. Studio saw the footage and like, this isn't what we wanted. So they, he came back and just did that end chase scene with the train, which is amazing, just that part alone. But the George Miller is amazing. He's gone on and did Babe, Babe Pig in the City. He's mm-hmm. done um, Happy Feet and Happy Feet 2. You're like, what? This guy did Mad Max and he's doing these kid things? What's wrong with this guy? This is amazing. And then he was attached with the Justice League movie that was hmm. going to come out what, in the 2000s. Yeah, um, yeah. It was farther along than I think anybody knew. So I'm just enamored with this guy. I think he's awesome, and I think he can do amazing things with action movies. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that one too. No one else in my family is. <laughs> my wife's like, that looks really stupid. You're going to see that by yourself. And I'm like, I'm sure I can drag my brother to see it at the very least. That sounds like you need a cheap ticket to Vegas, man. Come on yeah, out. We'll go see I, I always need a cheap ticket to Vegas. <laughs> That's awesome. But um, yeah, I'm trying to think. I know a lot came out. Um, we talked about Dare, Daredevil last time, which is amazing, but it got re-upped, so it's now uh, going to have a second season. Very exciting. Awesome news. Um, yeah, I can't think of anything else. Yeah, I think that pretty much covers it. I oh, mean, there wasn't a whole yeah, lot. the Joker. They released oh. the image of the Joker, which may or may not have been yes. real, real, and then they have another one where they show Jared Leto without tattoos. Yes, yes, of course. That's what I was thinking we should lead with that, and then it totally just went off my radar because – of how quickly it was like i mean people were all over it and it was it was really cool to see it release and it just exploded and then i felt like pretty quickly thereafter um and i i don't know if anything's been confirmed or not but but most people are saying that no it's that's not how he actually is going to look in the movie that it was just a tribute to the joker's uh 75th anniversary which i kind of believe because i mean it literally was the day that you, you that they were celebrating that because I had seen DC release um, just some you know some recognition for both Joker and Catwoman seventy five years the day before so to see it again when I saw it uh, before I even heard the rumors that it might not be real um, I thought to myself you know it looks like all the tattoos are a sort of tribute to various, you know, comic images that are pretty, you know, commonly associated from different versions of the Joker. And, um, I thought that it might just be promotional, but at the same time, I was kind of all for it. I think one of the things that they absolutely have to do with this Joker is distance him from, uh, from Ledger's portrayal, just like they distance Ledger from Nicholson's because Jack Nicholson, when that movie came out in 1989, he was the reason that Batman was good in 89. And everybody thought, what a performance. It carried the movie. He stole the show, all that stuff. I mean, not to say anything about Michael Keaton. He did fantastic as Batman too and surprised everybody. But it was like when Heath Ledger was going to be the Joker, everybody was saying, that's terrible. Oh my gosh, broke back mountain, blah, blah, blah. And Jack Nicholson will always be the Joker and I can never see anybody else doing it. And then now look at us you know Heath Ledger totally made it his own he took the Joker in a completely different direction and Leto's gonna do the same thing the coolest thing about all three of these guys is they all have chops they all can act they all can perform and each of them is gonna make the Joker their own version of it and still staying true to the character that we we all love I think we all would agree that yeah Nicholson was the Joker but a different Joker then then ledger and so why can't leto be the same thing and if he does have tattoos you know maybe he won't have as many and not as ridiculous i know the the one that got everybody was the one across the top of the forehead and, and that's the one that to me i thought kind of sealed the deals like this isn't really what he's gonna he's gonna look at or look like but to have a sort of punkier like you know a, a little bit more of an unhinged version. Um, one image I saw that was great. It said it showed Nicholson's and it said gangster. It showed Ledger's. It said um, anarchist, and then it showed Leto's and it said um, sociopath. And I thought, yeah, you know, make it your own and have the the image of the Joker has to be that as well. And so um, 
I'm glad they're not going with the deformed mouth of 1989, and I'm glad they're not going to do the scars on the side of the face of Ledger, because if you do that, then you're just copying, and it, of course it's not going to live up to it. No one's going to accept it. Yeah, and I may have been reading into this, but um, I pictured the Jared Leto version that we're seeing, that he looks more like the Scott Snyder current one where he got his face back and then sort of a taut face and his yeah. hair's a little bit mohawk -y sort of way. Mm -hmm. And maybe he has those tattoos because he's always wearing a suit. Who knows? But uh, obviously he didn't have the one on his forehead. But right. I pictured that as this look, and that look is great in the books with Scott Snyder. So mm -hmm. I've got no problem. Totally agree with you. It's like, why would you mimic something that already had been done? I think I saw a earlier post, and it could have been somebody manipulated, photoshopped Jared Leto, and they had, here's the new Joker, and it looked like the same um, yeah. as Heath Ledger, and I'm like, why would they do that? That can't be real. So I'm actually okay with this, but it's not. it has nothing to do with what he looks like, maybe the acting, and how they pull it off. Because that was, like you said, the thing that was Heath Ledger's is he he portrayed that he was an anarchist, and he liked chaos, and he was insane, Yet he had a plan the whole way through, mm -hmm. and except for the very end, he was one step ahead of Batman and uh, Gordon and everybody. So it was a great portrayal, and then Jack Nicholson was completely different than that. So I, I'm i just curious how he's going to play it. Yeah, I am too, and I think part of what makes it, um, at least for me, not as big of a deal is he's premiering in the Suicide Squad. You know, that that's what he's that villain. So he might not even be tie into the, you know, the Batman universe, um, which, again, we don't even know if they're going to make Batman movies at all. You know, with Ben Affleck, from what I've heard, they're just going forward with Justice League and Batman's just going to be a part of that. And he might not have his own solo films at all. And if that's the case, then who cares? You know, um, let this Joker be the Suicide Squad Joker, who I'm guessing it's going to be the villain that they go up against and um, and let that exist in its own place. And maybe that's OK to have a totally crazy tattooed up Joker for that. Yeah, and that's like you said, we don't we don't know. And I guess that's one area that um, Warner Brothers is doing okay. Is not really giving all the information, so we're kind of guessing. Mm -hmm. I guess you could say that's a bad thing. I don't know, but um, it seems like the information that Warner Brothers DC does release, we're all questioning and wondering why. So maybe not releasing information is best for Warner Brothers at this point. Well, the thing is, is everyone's talking about it. Like, it, it blew up, and everyone was talking about it, whether they were hating it or, you know, loving it or, you know, kind of somewhere in between like we are. Um, but, but it was getting talked about. It was getting talked about, and that's what you want. So we actually did have other casting news now that my old man brain wakes up. Um, <laughs> Both of us were like, what? One of your favorite characters, Jean Grey. We talked about Dark Phoenix earlier. Yes. I'm not saying she's going to be Dark Phoenix. I'm saying she's going to be Jean Grey. Is uh, Sophie Turner from uh, Game of Thrones, Sansa Stark, has been cast, which oh. I'll be honest, I think Famke is the ultimate Jean Grey because she's gorgeous. <laughs> but when I think about the acting, maybe she wasn't the best actress at it. So I'm curious how Sansa, or sorry, Sophie, will take it on. But um, it's it's interesting because this is one thing I think we've kind of all questioned as X-Men fans. How does this storyline work mm -hmm. now that Days of Future Past has taken place and sort of wiped out the events of everything we've known except for First Class? So how is it going to work? So yeah, it's interesting to see these younger people being cast in a movie. I think it's going to take place in the eighties. Yeah, well, and you have to have them be younger um, if it's just a sort of alternate timeline. Um, I love that it's going to take place in the eighties. That's kind of cool. Um, and, and the X Men really were in their heyday in the eighties too. So, um, especially the X Men that we know now. Um, and uh, yeah, I I think that's I like the casting. I think. Um, Gosh, American actors need to get on the ball, dude. Like the British actors are stealing everything because they're trained classically and they know what they're doing and they can portray characters. Um, and so it's just that's just me as an as an actor and and director talking about that. That's about the only well, that's the first thing that popped in my head. 
Ironically, Michael Fassbender's chairman, so him and Fassbender. Magneto, we can, we can well, yeah. Be, well, okay, so we'll just say European then. I mean, it's like they, but these, you know, you see these Game of Thrones actors, and and like half the Walking Dead actors are all, you know, they're not they're not American, but they're portraying these American characters. And can we claim great. Olivia Munn? I know she lived a lot of her life in Japan, but she is or has lived in Oklahoma. Yes. Can we can we please claim her? Yes, we are. Who is going done. to be playing uh, Psylocke? I know a lot of people knock this. Really? I don't know if they haven't seen the newsroom, but I think Olivia Munn is super talented. Yes. The newsroom is proof of that. If, if yeah. Anyone who says otherwise has not watched the newsroom, and they're just, they need to just shut up. Because, like, she is brilliant in the newsroom. And if you haven't seen that, then, yeah, you probably just see her as this bombshell, you know, hostess or whatever. But, no. And anyone who loves the the characters that they are going to portray, that's always a bonus. I think she'll do fine. It's just um, it's going to be dependent on the writing, especially for that character, um, Betsy Bad well, Braddock. Another interesting one that I'm not sure they're going to do is I'm looking at the IMDb, and Alex Summers is coming back, one of your favorite characters, Havoc. And yeah. we haven't technically been introduced to Cyclops yet in this new world. So... I'm curious how that's going to work because we all know Cyclops was on in the comic books was on the original team, but in the movies they made Havoc as X Men First Class, which was the one of the things that bothered me most about that uh, that film, the first one, the First Class, um, was was Havoc's involvement. I was just like, you're just like screwing everything up. And this was before we knew that it was going to be this alternate little timeline from the other X-Men movies. It was actually at that time, you know, part of the timeline. So it was really frustrating in that regard. I don't know if they're just going to completely ignore that they're brothers or whether they're actually going to, going to use that and Cyclops then. Well, I mean, well, it's weird that it's the same actor who played it in the first two movies. Yeah. In, uh, in Days of Future Past and First Class. And so it was the same actor, but the first movie took place in the 60s. Right. So it's like, did he have some kind of aging thing? Are they going <laughs> to somehow write in the Star Jammers? Like he joined up with Dad and he was going across the galaxy. So Still, he'd be like really way older. No, because time is relative. So it oh. didn't mean the same if he left planet Earth. That's what I'm uh, talking about. I see. I like, how are they going to? How are they going to do this? And they do have them listed on IMDb, both as Summers, the Summers brothers. So hmm. I'm curious. Yeah, well, you know, it wouldn't be the first time that they just are like, um, ignore that. Moving on, <laughs> move along. Here's some special effects. Okay. Remember that time I went and directed Superman instead of X-Men 3? Yeah, uh, just ignore that. Yeah, exactly, right? So I don't know. Um, I like the the new cast. I do like that. Um, I'll take Hugh Jackman as long as he's willing to do it for Wolverine, uh, and that's about what I'll where I'll leave it with X Men because really any X Men movie was only as good as Wolverine was in it, in my opinion. Um, and First Class, uh, I would say the same, but but for Fassbender, it, you know, as Magneto, I thought he was the best part of that movie. I can't. They just have Days of Future Past on HBO, and I can't turn it off when it's on. I don't know why. Mm -hmm. I really enjoy the movie every time I see it. Um, I think Peter Dinklage is amazing in that movie as Trask. I love seeing him on screen. But I am just amazed at the interactions between Michael Fassbender and James McAvoy. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, Patrick Stewart and Sir Ian McKellen. Mm -hmm. They nailed it with the casting. And mm -hmm. to me, I totally agree with what you're saying with Wolverine. But when you have those two, your yeah. pair going on, it's just phenomenal. And I go back to the very first X-Men movie, one of the first scenes when he's at the conference. I think Gene Gray was talking, and um, uh, Magneto's walking away on the walkway, and um, Professor X is wheeling right behind him. And you just have that interchange with him, and it ends with, I'll bring you hope, old friend. And you're like, what is going on? The tension is amazing. Why would he call him old friend? When clearly they're not. Oh my God! I can't wait to see the rest of it. And it's just, and and there was no action in the scene, but two of the best actors in the world can do that, and I just I love it. I love every time they're on the screen together. Yeah, yeah. I those are two, as you know, two of my favorite actors. I got to see them on Broadway 
um, two Christmases ago, and oh my, oh, and like, and I got to see these hey, guys. Woo. Anytime I get to talk about that, I will. You know me, and you said Sir Ian McKellen, and you knew it was coming because it was the most amazing thing. Because they had that same sort of just natural chemistry. They're pay they're playing two best friends in this you know dystopian world in in Waiting for Godot, and they just had this this chemistry and the way they worked off of each other. Apocalypse is only the strong who will survive. So if you're a weak mutant, a la Jubilee, who I'm really hoping gets killed off right away, or another one that Jason loves, Dazzler, um, then you're gone. And Apocalypse doesn't care. Couldn't care less because you're gone. You're not strong. You will not survive. So I'm excited for X-Men Apocalypse. It could get really dark. We're going to see the return of um, Nightcrawler. Um, not from um, Alan Cummings. Um, but from, oh, I can't think of his name. I know I just saw it. New actors jumping on to do it. Oh, it's going to bug me as usual. But you know um, me, I can't help you with it. Yeah, I don't know why I'm slipping my mind. <laughs> I think it was the kid who was in the uh, Let the Right One In or Let Me In. The uh, Yeah, Cody Smith McPhee. Um, uh, horror movie. I think it was Dutch. But um, yeah, he's phenomenal. Very soft-spoken, very quiet. Uh, Nicholas Holt as the Beast, I think, is phenomenal. I love yeah, he's good. that cameo from Kelsey Grammer at the end. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, Nicholas Holt, who plays him in the beginning. I think that's great. And, of course, we're going to get to see uh, Quicksilver again. Evan Peters, one of the best scenes in Days yes. of Future Past when he's in the kitchen and he's taking care of everybody because uh, Wolverine's not fast enough. Magneto can't – doesn't. Or, I'm sorry, Charles doesn't want Magneto to use his powers, and Charles doesn't have powers right there. So mm -hmm. – Anyway, that was just filler because you you froze. But I I mentioned <laughs> you know, waiting for Godot and thank and you, thank you. I I think the computer couldn't handle how excited I was. I think that was that was what it was all about. But yeah, I'm excited for for uh, Age of Apocalypse as well. Um, and my son is because he loves all things Egypt, and so he was super excited at all the 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 Egypt imagery that was in the teaser. And then um, I saw just a. a a still picture and it looked like it was some sort of Egyptian tomb as well. So I know he'll be fired up about that too. Did you not watch the end of uh, days of future past? I did. Yeah. The, the, the oh. uh, stinger at the end. Yeah. That, yeah. that was what he was excited about at first when he watched that he was psyched about that, but I haven't shown him the still yet uh, that I saw. I don't know if you've seen it of the uh, Egyptian tomb. That is, and it, it was hard to decipher exactly what it was, but I know that if the, the more that they involve Egypt, the more excited he'll be about it. Now, I would like to say there is a certain character that's filming right now. Apocalypse is starting to film. I don't see why there can't be crossover, and he is very much involved in a lot of Apocalypse stories. Deadpool, and they're both yeah. owned by Fox, so I don't see why Deadpool can't make an appearance. He's not listed anywhere, but I would love to see that. If nothing else, there should be a stinger, right? Uh, put the stinger in there yeah. with Deadpool because I am super excited about that movie. Um, I heard they're halfway through filming it, which is pretty yeah, surprising. Yeah, Ryan Reynolds releasing uh, set photos, and they're all quite amazing. My favorite, I've seen a poster now, and I actually have it on my phone as my screensaver. <laughs> uh, I think I put it on Facebook. It's uh, Deadpool like jumping off in the middle of nowhere with an umbrella. And the tagline is, with great power comes great irresponsibility. And I'm like, mm -hmm. that's Deadpool. I love yep. it. Yep, yep. And he's hilarious to follow on Twitter. Every now and then he'll say something crazy. Like someone asked, are you still in Vancouver? And he's like, you're right behind me, aren't you? <laughs> that just cracked me up. <laughs> just cracked me up. So that's cool. Awesome. Well, we better wrap it up because I think yeah. my computer might explode if we don't or something. I don't know what the deal was today. Make sure you check us out on Nerd Locker. That's where we're from, Two Nerds. And then we're on uh, uh, Two Nerdy Dads. We'll be on YouTube as well, as well as uh, iTunes. And NerdLocker.com, Facebook.NerdLocker, Instagram NerdLocker, Twitter NerdLocker. They've got a short right. news. Make one. Come on. <laughs> what social media? Just win out. I'll no, it's always the fun. latest one. No. We don't have a Snapchat yet. We're in big trouble. The kids, no. the kids aren't with us anymore, man. The kids <laughs> these days are on that right. Snapchat thing on that interwebs. That's right. Anyway. All right. Have a nerdy week. Have a nerdy week, guys.